I was thinking I was supposed to be complaining about something, but I kind of forgot what that was. So I've decided I'm going to make a movie, a movie. I'm going to make a movie. I'm going to make a list of a video. Oh my God. I'm going to make a video about my favorite directors. Yeah, that's going to say best directors, but if I just put my favorite directors, nobody would look at it. And nobody's going to watch it past this point anyway because I've already flubbed it three times. But these are my favorite directors. Okay, so my first favorite director is Francis Ford Coppola. Now, I've been saying that for a long time, and I tend to carry people over it, even if they really don't make that much. I don't know what happened. There was that time he lost that laptop, and he was supposed to be making that, what was it called, Megalopolis or something? He was supposed to be making some movie, and he lost his laptop in a cafe somewhere in South America or something. And then I never heard anything again, and... The reason he's my favorite director is because two of his movies are in my top five of all time. Uh, the Godfather and The Outsiders. The thing with The Outsiders is that I love the version I grew up on. Now, there were multiple versions. And for whatever reason, I had watched it on TV. This is back in the days when I was a kid. So this is like when it came on right after it had been a movie. So it's probably like in the mid to late 80s. And I taped it off of TV so the version I saw is the one where um, they have the courtroom scene at the end with um, the Curtis brothers and they have to chase soda that's my favorite version now there's like I said there's different versions with different endings some they don't include that and then to my horror he refurbished the movie sometime in the last two decades I don't remember if it was 2000 whatever so because he refurbished it I hauled my cookies all the way to New York to see because it wasn't playing anywhere near here to see it on the big screen in this refurbished version I I don't know if I cried I may have cried not happy cried because he kind of ruined it <laughs> with all of the uh he changed the music his dad had done the music originally and um, he took away that and put in songs of the time, like, you know, rock and roll type songs that he had um, wanted to use at the time, but the film gods didn't let him do it. And that's why The Outsiders had been a great movie. So when I'm talking about The Outsiders, I am not talking about the refurbished version. Yeah, it has a couple of extra scenes, but... Like I said, all that music ruined it. I, I Like I said, if I didn't cry, I felt like crying. <laughs> so what I had done was at one point, um, there were some copies of the other version of the DVD in the, you know, the cheap bin at Walmart. I bought like three of them in case of the apocalypse. So that's the version. This version that has the courtroom scene tacked on at the end. And I don't even know if that has that scene or if it just ends with, um, it might just, it, I don't know that it has a courtroom scene or if I'm just remembering my VHS tape, but it has, I know it stops at, um, the, um, Johnny Cade voiceover at the end. It may end with that, but, um, the, that refurbished version, I don't know. So if you can watch the normal version with the tacked on courtroom scene that's my number five all-time favorite movie now the godfather is my other favorite movie and this i want to say the godfather saga but it's not it's the godfather just that first film that ends with michael corleone in the chair because um well he doesn't end with that that's the other one <laughs> when um what does he do what's his face dies at the end and I see what's his face means it's not a spoiler but you understand what I'm saying so now I'm confusing myself wait a minute <laughs> let me see something I did screw that up yeah no it ends this is why the Godfather saga when it was edited together just the first two 
I do this. I do this with Kill Bill. I do this with movies and stuff like that. So maybe I should say the Godfather saga. But actually, all that Las Vegas stuff with Mo Green and everything, I like that. And the Fredo stuff. But it's really the first Godfather that, if I'm saying the tight, it's slightly better than the whole two things together, the whole two mixed together. Although I like all that stuff, but I don't need Robert De Niro. <laughs> Any of, I don't really need the Vito Corleone in the old days stuff. You know, De Niro, Brando. Oh, um, James Conn. I just forgot his character's name. This is what happened. Santino. You know what I mean? That whole thing was perfect. Um, but otherwise... Francis Coppola has made a lot of movies that, I mean, Jack, come on. So being my favorite director doesn't mean I love everything they do. It doesn't mean everything's perfect. It's just they either have a couple movies I love a lot. Like I said, these are both in my top five. So for me to think of someone else, like Woody Allen is going to be the next person I talk about, but over his whole massive career. Like, I don't think one of his movies comes in my top... I don't even know what number. I got the list over here. I wrote it all down years ago. I haven't updated it since 2011. And I always, every couple years, I say, I should update it. I should update it. And you know what? I look at the list and I don't want to move anything. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, I could put a new movie somewhere in there, but it'd probably be in the between 100 and 200. So I don't end up doing it. I should. I should. Maybe I'll make a video of the top movies since the last one I put in my top 100 was The Dark Knight. And that's at number 11. So maybe, maybe I'll do that. I did like The Godfather 3. Again, it's not on my list. Um, I liked... Um, Rumblefish, of course, Motorcycle Boy and all that stuff. So definitely, he's my favorite. Even though, haven't heard from him for a while. Um, but um, Woody Allen, my second favorite director ever. Now, Woody Allen's just, in my opinion, he's the most brilliant person ever. Now, here's the difference where his movies are basically, you know, no fancy camera angles, no fancy, you know, saturation. Not, it's just look at my movie, here's my script, here's some people acting, and it's better than all that other crap, you know, um, he hires good actors, he hires the right people, he puts them in there, and, um, he's just been so prolific and so extraordinary, and I don't know if anybody's ever been more brilliant, but my favorite movie of his is, um, everything you ever want to know about sex, what we're afraid to ask, <laughs> the, um, the scene, with the giant boob and I'm going to be talking about spoilers throughout this whole thing so I mean not massive ones but I'm going to reference things if it was a massive spoiler I would say so that's why when I said so-and-so dies at the end I didn't say who it was but um the best line in movie history in my opinion the funniest line is when that boob has <laughs> is on the loose and he runs into the sheriff's office what he says then I just I don't know it made me laugh so hard oh my god he always has that's the great thing about his movie he always has that one it's not even a zinger it's like I don't know an atomic bomb of a hilarious line um the if the only the next movie that I would have said is an, a, an extraordinary line it's Jeff Goldblum in Annie Hall, his line, which is, I mean, you could just sit there and laugh at that line forever if you understand how funny that is, how many reasons why that's that funny. I'm not going to tell you what it is because, again, I want you to hear it in context and laugh your ass off if you haven't seen Annie Hall before. Um, I, the next movie is that, I mean, Annie Hall isn't even one of my favorite movies, that, but after everything you want to know about sex, we was afraid to ask. It's probably Manhattan Murder Mystery. This that movie was so much fun. I was not, at being older at that point. I was able to see these movies in the theater, and 
just just so funny him and Diane Keaton caught up in this murder mystery it's so and the two of them together by that time they really were like an old married couple just getting into shenanigans and I mean I think and even if you don't like Woody Allen movies or you think they're like somebody used to complain about movies like that and call them talking movies like oh no why would you watch a talking movie <laughs> but that even for people who don't like talking movies that was um that's one of the all-time greats and you could hit any I mean he's got a sprinkling of movies I don't personally like but some of them are you know considered his best but I mean I love sleeper um <laughs> um recently I mean blue jasmine was great and even yeah interiors is not funny at all it's as serious as a heart attack that's an amazing movie that was more towards his because he loved um help me out what's his name oh my god his big idol shoot my brain Ingmar Bergman I had to pause this just to, once I paused it I immediately thought of Ingmar Bergman but yeah so anyway in tears was great there's so many amazing movies you know crimes misdemeanors I mean like I said today today's po political climate I think it's bananas the movie bananas and it's like how can how can we have devolved into the movie bananas but here we are and it's just at any point in any time you know just somebody has a Woody Allen movie for you to watch just watch it 95% of the time it's going to be amazing and I'm sure there are people who think the ones that I don't like are amazing and the ones that I like are maybe on the low end but he's just been so consistent and so funny and so brilliant over all these years and he's still making movies and he just I don't know I don't know how he exists because he's just so awesome and how he's endured with all the things that they put him through um so my third favorite director is David Lynch now David Lynch I didn't watch Twin Peaks when it originally ran and yesterday was Twin Peaks day so I rewatched the pilot which I've seen a bunch of times but Twin Peaks, that group, those actors he assembled, that story with the mythology in it. I mean, there's so much to that. But in the end, it's about a very sort of empathetic story about the tragedy and the horrors of just regular life in an American town and it's just when you t I mean these characters all were something you know they all brought something and that show what meant so much to people and people watched it for years and people wanted it come back and I was one of the people you know on the internet every once in a while thinking gee you know it's 20 years do you think maybe when it gets to 25 years David Lynch will bring it back and it was like a weird thing to want because people didn't do that directors didn't do that and then he brought it back and it was amazing and he and Mark Frost put together just an amazing third season which honest to God that was the best movie that year that season was the best movie that year and because the lines have been blurred, I feel like Game of Thrones forever blurred the lines between cinematic movies and TV, so, and it doesn't matter anymore, people are going to be doing everything by streaming, so in reality, Twin Peaks The Return was better than every movie that came out that year, I'm not talking about just that one extremely cinematic episode, which I think was episode 8, I'm talking about the whole thing. Um... Kyle McLaughlin's performance was amazing in that after he'd already been amazing years ago but um Naomi Watts is Janie E oh my god I mean there was so much to love and that's the thing this this heart chakra t kind of um thing that to me is what Twin Peaks is based on now his other stuff his um more of his movies 
there maybe not heart chakra so much <laughs> um out of those i love maholland drive lucky enough to see that in a movie theater now a lot of these movies like if woody allen made a movie because i don't live in a city when they will come out sometimes they didn't play here so i would either have to go to boston or just get lucky but uh, Mulholland Drive, I was able to see, and I just, it was so amazing. I mean, some of these movies influence my philosophy on life. And, you know, the Club Silencio, what they say, what the, the, the MC guy says, I'm like, yeah, that's life. That's how we're, that's what's going on, you know? And um, so out of his, you know, movie movies that were released in theaters you know that's my favorite um lost highway is great i had to come to that later on i didn't get it at all at first and you know as i got older and started thinking better <laughs> i started to realize that it's more about not can you figure it out can you you know it's the feeling of it. You have to feel movies. You know what I mean? Sometimes. And, and the movies you can feel are so much better than the ones that, you know, like a freaking war picture or something like that. I mean, who needs that? But um, what else? I mean, The Elephant Man. Oh, God. I probably saw, when I was a kid, like I said, we first got HBO years ago they used to play star wars all the time and they used to play rocky all the time so those are two of my favorite movies anyway but for some reason when i was a kid i was like 10 the elephant man was always on and i used to i swore to god i swore that the elephant did something to the mother and that's how come he turned out like that and i swear the movie wanted me to think that i don't know but i watched the elephant man a million times of course john hurt was amazing poor man died without an oscar meanwhile the kind of idiots who have oscars whatever I digress, but um, the straight story is sort of amazing because it's a G-rated movie, and it's perfect. It's perfect. So, I mean, you want to think of David Lynch having these really weird and messed up, but he can do something like the straight story, and it'd be great. Dune, I love. They're constantly remaking Dune, trying to fix it. Maybe that book is just a hot mess to try to get, you know satisfactorily done to everybody who wants to see it but I love Dune you know I mean I thought it was beautiful you know sumptuous if you want with the costumes and just all of it I think that was a De Laurentiis picture you know it had that sort of rich texture and I mean I really liked it I know he had disavowed one of the versions of it but I don't know. It bothers me when directors disavow some of their stuff because sometimes that's the stuff I like the most. But, um, yeah, so David Lynch is supposed to be doing something now. He's always talking to us every day with his weather reports, and he's just, you know, an extraordinary artist in person. And so those have been my big three directors for a long, 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 long time. After that, I had to try to open up some room for some other people, um, Quentin Tarantino would have been the first to um, get in on my new list. Um, he he just changed everything. I mean, Pulp Fiction. He had made you know Reservoir Dogs and everything, but Pulp Fiction blasted onto the scene in such a way it changed the way we talked. It changed everything, and people have been trying to pretend to be Quentin Tarantino ever since then. You know, other directors and. You know, I'm watching last year's Parasite when it won Best Picture, and I'm like, really? Because that was like a really crappy attempt at a Tarantino movie. But because of certain other reasons why people want films to win Best Picture, it did. But um, Tarantino's movies have yet to win Best Picture. So, you know, something that was... Oh, siren. Something that was supposed to be, was to me, seemed to be attempting to be a movie like his, but failing and being half cartoon and having completely unrealistic characters wins Best Picture. And it's just like, yeah, okay, Oscar, you haven't known what you're doing for years. You know, David Lynch only has an honorary Oscar, right? He has no Best Picture. But 
So, <laughs> um, Kill Bill. I love Kill Bill. I think uh, Kill Bill is higher on my list than Pulp Fiction. Um, and I put it together. That one I put together as one movie because he always meant it that way. It just was cut in half and released that way. Um, but yeah, uh, everything about his use of music and, you know, with the films and his universe that's a hyper version of our own. It's so much better than our own. Um, of course, Django was amazing. Um, and, you know, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood was just absolutely fantastic. I mean, it was just like fully realized Quentin, you know, the movie fan and him, the one who was actually happy. That movie was so happy, so yellow and bright sunshine, even though it was about certain things. That was the love movie that Quentin Tarantino made. Um, yeah, I don't have a problem with any of his movies. Of course, Reservoir Dogs is great. They're all great. Um, you know, he was supposed to only make ten. He's done nine. The way the world is right now, I don't know what's coming. But I was going to be sad if there were only ten. Now it's like, are we even going to get there? But he definitely made such a huge mark. And sometimes it's almost like, is he like a Mozart? Is he like a Beethoven? Because you know you wonder what it was like to live in the time where there was somebody that huge and had that much impact that they last for hundreds of years. Sometimes it's like, is, is that Quentin Tarantino? Is that who he is as a director? But um, next on my list is Christopher Nolan, who I, I, I he's still there, but Tenet really let me down. But like I said, he's had enough. I had to wait until Interstellar to put him on my list because I needed to see that he had enough movies that I really liked a lot. Like I said, The Dark Knight is my number 11 movie. I love The Dark Knight Rises. I know a lot of people didn't like it as much, but whatever. Um, the Dark Knight was obviously very influenced by, you know, Heat, which is an astounding movie, but I just felt like when I first watched it, I'm like, this is the godfather of superhero movies you know what I mean because the seriousness of it and I don't know why I always thought of that towards the end I, there was a scene where you know Bruce is driving in the Batmobile and right then when he's in the car I'm like why is this making me think this is the godfather of superhero movies but um it was and of course he had amazing I mean Inception was amazing um just everything I mean again we have love-centered movies but um I'm trying to, I had the other one on the tip of my tongue, and this is, this is old age. It's not that I don't like these movies. It's just when you're trying to think of something, sometimes the prestige, your brain just goes. So anyway, the prestige <laughs> was amazing. And I like, you may tell by the fact that I like David Lynch, I like not knowing what happened. I like not being 100% sure I have the ending right, and that's fine that's fine by me I don't need to, to say uh, the people who go that movie didn't make any sense whatever movie they're talking about I'm like now I have to watch it because <laughs> if you didn't understand it it might have been brilliant but um yeah so Christopher Nolan for sure I just hope that if movies continue on you know I hope that he makes more movies like those um M. Night Shyamalan is one of my favorite directors. Um, it took the last couple movies because remember he had that movie where the trees were killing people? Something went wrong there. But up to that point, I liked most of his movies a great deal. I mean, I thought Unbreakable was brilliant. You know, I liked Lady in the Water a lot. Um, so when he did Split, I went and saw it, and I was like, yeah, this is okay, it's pretty good, you know, and then the ending, I almost fell out of my chair, you know, that's what I want, I want to fall out of my chair, <laughs> you know what I mean, so, and then with Glass, the way he wrapped up that trilogy, that was just, I really loved it, I loved the idea that we're the heroes, and I know that's my interpretation, other people may think something else, but I felt like that was our origin story, um, meaning the fans but um, I he did 
uh, TV series that I had watched a while ago. No, I'm forgetting the... It was Twin Peaks, you know, like, yeah, Matt Dillon was in it. Old age, man. But anyway, so he got back on track. I include him in my favorite directors. Now, the one director who... I didn't watch his movies in the theater too much. And I had to catch on later on. And it was because of Quentin Tarantino that I ended up being a huge fan of Brian De Palma. And... The last few movies he had in the theater, I was disappointed with people because either they didn't get it, they didn't want to get it, or they saw something less than what was there. He had made a, a film redacted, which was about um, the war and everything, and then it was supposed to be a total bomb and horrible because he used real people or something. And then... Um, Catherine Bigelow <laughs> one for the Hurt Locker which I thought the Hurt Locker was so much like redacted but again you know the Oscars have their reasons that are reasons and um, he had done Femme Fatale which I thought was great and towards the end his movies started being like they circled back on his own movies as if they were an anthology but um so I was like are people picking up on this the Black Dahlia I saw in the theater I thought it was amazing of course again people just missed because they're dumb and um you know going back my favorite of his is um Body Double um it's just they're so high gloss they're so you know more a more awakened version of life than real life um, Baroque or something like that um, I was gonna say oh uh, blowout obviously is amazing I mean and when you think of the imagery in these movies that's you know it's just so amazing and I yeah I know everybody loves Scarface I never really liked Scarface that much it looked great I just thought Tony Montana was so gross like the character um, <laughs> and all those people that look up to that character I think it's awful because you know the point was don't be like him and people missed it because he ended up the world wasn't his <laughs> he was wrong about that but you know I don't know what people look for in other directors. I mean, I look for style. I look for, you know, just like I said, better than life can do because life is crap. You know, you want to have Calgon moments. You want them to take you away. You want to go to Middle Earth. Now, I don't count Peter Jackson as one of my favorite directors. I mean, Fellowship of the Ring, the extended edition, you know, that's my favorite movie ever. But outside of the Tolkien movies, I haven't really been too much of a fan of his work so I'd need to see one more thing if he's going to make any more movies I don't know um that wasn't Tolkien and then I could say okay if I really liked it but so far I haven't um there are other directors who I kind of like like I said I don't include them on my list up, up, up till that you know with De Palma and Tarantino and those other guys that's my list of my favorite directors but um Peter Weir was somebody whose movies I really liked, um, Fearless, and, um, shoot, I was, I was gonna say Bad Day at Black Rock, it's not Bad Day at Black Rock, this is what happens with old age, I'm telling you, um, something rock, when, Picnic at Hanging Rock, <laughs> which is really good, um, The Last Wave is slightly better, I mean, he did so many great movies, uh, Master and Commander, you know, so he gets overlooked, I think, a lot. But he did some really great movies. So those guys are all people I kind of like. Um, We'll see. I mean, I really enjoyed the Russo Brothers' efforts in the Marvel Universe. We'll see what happens beyond there. Um, So they're on the to-watch list. Um, Otherwise, who else? Um, There are a lot of young directors and stuff. But, you know, movies... They're not as much fun as they used to be, so you have to think about it. Um, Dexter Fletcher, I did not watch Bohemian Rhapsody because I hated the casting. Um, I was a big fan of Freddie Mercury, but I did not like that casting, so I boycotted that movie. 
and that wasn't Dexter Fletcher anyway but Dexter Fletcher had done I didn't realize he had done um, the Eddie the Eagle movie which I loved and then he just did Rocket Man which with um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood those are my two favorite movies that year um, Todd Phillips just made Joker amazing we'll have to see I mean there are people who really they're popping up and it's like wait a minute they're actually a good director hmm we'll have to think about that like I said movie going I was a movie fan I like to go to the cinema and see things on the big screen so since that's um, not really gonna happen in the near future they may start up again but the way they're handling things I think I think my movie going days are over and I don't see me really watching that much on streaming. It won't be the same anyway, but you know, so my list is probably complete as is. It's probably not going to change anytime soon, but let's pretend the world was the same as it was a couple years ago. I mean, there's there are great directors out there, people who know what they're doing, and um, I hope people are able to make movies. I hope that people aren't too um, worried about offending people and you know political correctness and you know diversity clauses and all that stuff I hope that artists can just be artists and make things that they want to that would be really lovely if movie going does continue but um, we have the works of our favorite directors that we can just rewatch that stuff until the world pops but um, so those are my guys yeah those are my guys and I hope you were at least entertained a little bit by this. If not, I'm sorry. Have fun, kids. <laughs>